Hey guys, welcome to All Electronics, I'm Gregory and today we're gonna try to understand and investigate if you can use a CMOS inverter gate as a linear amplifier. Can a 748C04 be used to amplify linear high frequency signals? Let's see. So guys, this is a CMOS inverter gate and we can see that inside the CMOS NOT gate we have two complementary CMOS devices, one N device and one P device, and they are connected in a complementary way. When I think on digital logic, we think that these devices are switches. When the input signal is high, the N device is turned on and the P device is turned off. So this device pulls the output low and you have a zero on the output. When you have a zero on the input, the N MOS device is turned off and the P MOS device is turned on because the P device works in reverse way. So the P device being on, it pulls up the output and you have a one logic signal in the output. This is the large signal response of this complementary setup. From the perspective of an analog circuit, from the perspective of a small signal on the input, we can think of the inverter CMOS gate as a very high gain analog and linear amplifier with inverted gain, so with a very high negative gain. This is the response of this circuit here, of this complementary NMOS and PMOS circuit. We can see that when the input is above half VCC, we have a very fast transition to zero. And when we are below half VCC, we have a very fast transition to high. And this, this, when looked as an amplifier, will saturate on VCC, a high output, on or on zero, on, in GND, a zero logic, out, logic output. So we can see that here on the middle of this transition, we have some very high gain. The inclination of this line here is the gain of this stage. And when you have a small signal on the input, the biasing point can wiggle here on the slope of the transition and you have an amplified output on the output of the inverter gate. If you are familiar with analog circuits, you already think it how it works. And you can see here on this circuit, it's very clear to see that the NMOS device can be seen in this configuration as a common source amplifier. Ignore this P MOS device here. Think that here we have a resistive load, a resistor, a pull up resistor. A small signal on the gate of this NMOS device will modulate the current on the drain. The current here, from a small signal perspective, is proportional to the small signal voltage on the gate. If we had a resistance here, this resistance will transform this variation in current in an output voltage. This is the common source amplifier, NMOS common source amplifier. When we put the P device here, it's like a resistor that is also changing its resistance. We can see the P MOS device as a dynamic active load. When the small signal is higher, the NMOS device will try to conduct more current on its, on its output and the PMOS will conduct less current. So we can think about this as an NMOS with a resistance that increases with voltage. If the resistance seen in the drain of the PMOS increases with voltage, it helps to increase the gain of this stage. When the small signal on the input is lower, 
the NMOS device will try to pump less current on its drain. But the PMOS device, as it works in the reverse way than the NMOS, will try to pump more current. So we can think that we have an NMOS amplifier with a resistance that now becomes lower. So it helps to decrease even more the signal. The P device is a dynamic load that helps to increase the gain. As we have a current over voltage relation, a current output over voltage input, the impedance of the load will help set the gain of this amplifier, as the load works as a trans-resistance device that transforms the current output again in an output voltage. This linear operation works only in the middle of VCCs, so we need to have DC feedback here to stabilize this circuit in the center of operation. We can do that very simple with a resistive feedback. This resistor feedback at DC will stabilize the biasing of this arrangement in half VCC because it's the only condition where output equals input. We force the condition of half VCC with this simple resistor as a feedback loop around this MOS arrangement. This is the simplest arrangement that works in practice. We have the feedback that will ensure the DC biasing of the stage on the middle of VCC. We have an AC load here. We can see that this resistive load will be there only for AC signal. This is a trans-resistance device that will translate the output current pumped by the CMOS stage to a voltage, to an output voltage. And we have an AC coupling on the input with a 56 ohm resistor here to match with the transmission line that comes from the generator. This will generate the maximum output gain possible from this stage here with this load here. Let's see if it works on the bench and we'll come here to see how we can use this arrangement with a feedback loop around to get the gain to a precise level. This is the circuit that we're gonna test now. I draw it here and you have the one meg without the feedback loop to control the gain. So you're gonna get the maximum possible gain with this output impedance. And sorry, the circuit is a bit messy. I was testing a lot of configurations here and well, it works, let's see. Here we can see the circuit working and we see that we have very high gain. So we are, the input is four millivolts, is a minus 45 dBm. So we have four millivolts peak to peak and the output peak to peak is 500 millivolts. So we can calculate the gain. 500, enter 4 millivolts, divided. The gain here is 132, it's a pretty high gain to a 1 meg signal. And we can see that the linearity is not so bad to an inverter CMOS gate. This is very impressive. Impressive, you can see, I will change to a 10 meg signal. The signal is being generated by that HP generator. Let's change to a 10 meg signal. So very impressive. We are seeing a bit of noise, but it's for my LED lights. So don't look at that. Now the gain dropped. So we can calculate a lot, a lot of things here. The gain product bandwidth, the, the FT transition frequency. And I tried to calculate and I have a table. We have the, the 130 uh, uh, times gain. It's almost 42 dB of gain, it's a lot of gain at one meg. Pretty nice circuit. And the gain bandwidth product would be one gig. One gig if we uh, consider that this circuit has a one pole response. But it's not a one pole response. We have pretty nasty results if, if we increase the frequency and we get a lot of phase shift and a lot of stuff. So this impedance is very important to drop the gain 
if we do not have this trans resistance impedance here uh, we would get uh, get a lot of oscillations here we need to decrease the gain to increase our gain margin of this closed loop here i think we can use feedback loop around this logic gate because we have an inverter gain we can work with this gate as it was uh, op amp an inverter gain configuration op amp so let's try to make a 10 dB power gain amplifier. To have 10 dB of power gain, we need 3.16 times voltage gain. We need to have, we need to control the gain of this stage to be 3.16 to have a 10 dB power gain between input and output. I think we can try to do this. We can try to put a series resistor here and change this resistor here let's see to get three times gain we can try to use 10k resistor here and change this, resi this resistor here to be 33k so as an inverter configuration the closed loop gain of this stage for signal not for noise gain would be three almost three 0.16 but this is the closed gain for an infinite open loop gain and we know that the open loop gain is not infinite here is almost uh, 200 so the 200 uh, uh, open loop gain will decrease the closed loop gain and i think we're gonna get something close to 3.16 let's see on the bench so guys i use it an 8k2 and a 27k resistor because i didn't have the i didn't have the 33 i said but 27 over 8k2 it's almost 3 dot uh, 3 dot 16 that we need and i think it's working really well look at this guys 33 millivolts input signal and 100 millivolts output signal a 10 db increase in power gain in a one mag frequency we can see that if i increase the frequency let's see let's use 10 mag here we can see that the gain drop it and it drop it because the open loop drops a lot with the frequency if we tweak the resistors i think we would get 3.3 uh, uh, of gain with no problems we need only to consider that the open loop gain is not infinity so we need to consider the, the open loop on the feedback resistors calculation so guys i hope you like it, this video please give a thumbs up to the video if you like it subscribe to the channel if you would like to to see more videos about electronics and see you in the next video here from our electronics